All right, so out of the end of this three inch pipe here, we're gonna be running to the toilet, but we've branched off with a three by two Y. And then we're gonna be installing this. It's kind of a turnaround, but the reason we put this on here is so that we can get within five feet to that shower so that we have within a five foot trap arm because that's the maximum trap arm length. Hey guys, we're out here at a remodel where we're going to be adding a bathroom to an existing house. And today we're going to be piping a bathroom group using only one vent instead of a vent per fixture. And we're going to be doing that using UPC plumbing code. So we're in the master bathroom here and there was no plumbing previously in this room. So what we're having to do is tie in in this mechanical room behind me and there's a spot where there's a four inch stack that we can tie into for the drain. And then of course, we'll have to find a way to get a vent up to the attic and tie into the existing venting. I'm cutting this piece out so that I can put the Y in to tie into the bathroom. So this will be placed in there right where you see the saw sitting right now. So we wanna keep this nice and clean. No sand in there, anything that would cause that seal on the rubber coupling to not work. So I did get that Y in. Um, nobody flushed, so that's good. Um, I gotta bend these copper lines that are in our way up just a little more. I gotta carefully do that so that our drain can get right underneath of that. So the next part now is we're gonna run our main line over. We wanna maintain that quarter inch per foot. So that comes out to a quarter bubble on a torpedo level. So we'll run this main line over to the bathroom group where we're gonna have more Ys and we'll explain more on that. So if you have a toilet going into a PVC line, you know that you have to have at least a three inch PVC pipe. And you can do up to, according to UPC, in Minnesota, we can do up to three toilets on a horizontal branch on a three inch pipe before you have to go up to the next size, which is four inch PVC. The next thing is, is we got to get the section into this 90. So let's keep getting this main piped in towards the bathroom group. So this is the first Y for our bathroom group. So this branch is going to go to the shower and then it's going to Y again and catch the um, lav behind me. And then this will continue on to the toilet. So this is going to be the first Y of the horizontal bathroom group. So you'll notice when I'm putting in a Y like this, I'm putting my level on the end of the pipe to make sure that the next branch is also coming in at a quarter inch per foot. So not only the pipe graded, but the, the uh, branch has to start grading so that the branch going into there will also be a quarter inch per foot. All right. so. Out of the end of this three inch pipe here, we're gonna be running to the toilet, but we've branched off with a three by two Y. And then we're gonna be installing this. It's kind of a turnaround, but the reason we put this on here is so that we can get within five feet to that shower so that we have within a five foot trap arm because that's the maximum trap arm length. So we're gonna, we added more fitting so that we turn around and head back for the lab. We'll be backtracking a little bit and. Since we did those turns and because we're going to have two sinks with a fixture cross, it's called, um, we will be putting a clean out on there so that if that ever had blockage, it could be cleaned out. So this is the fitting we're going to use to offset this toilet riser 18 inches off the wall. And then our distance off the back wall, which is this wall, will be 13. I like to go 13 and just to leave more room behind the toilet in case anyone ever decides to do any kind of board or any type of uh, detail behind the toilet. So I'm going to put these fittings together and line them up and try to get as close as I can. But if you were 12 and 7 eighths or 13 and an eighth off the back wall, it's not worth stressing over. It's, it, that's within the margin of error. So I've got the pe first piece cut here and we are still playing around a little bit. I'll, um, before I glue it, I'm going to dry fit this one into place. But you want to make sure you get these cuts as square as possible. Otherwise, they'll end up being a different length than what you intended. I'm going to dry fit this section together and uh, 
put it in place to make sure that it's landing where I want it. Of course it helps actually if you don't prime it. You notice I primed it, but it should be close enough we can make it work. So when you measure in between two fittings for the piece of pipe, you want to go end to end and then add three inches in this case. So whatever the two hubs are combined, you'll want to add that together. All right, so I pre-built this section and made some marks with Sharpie. So you'll see I've got some marks here, given it's a little bit off of here, but then I have a mark here that'll line up with the last fitting joint. So I'm gonna pre-build this whole section and then quickly install it so that if anything needs to move a little bit, if my marks were a hair off, then I still have room. So you gotta, I have some, uh, I have some tolerance if, if stuff's not exactly where I want it. But you gotta move quick to do it that way. Otherwise it sets up and then it's locked in right wherever it was left. It doesn't hurt to just double check that grade. So put your level back on that pipe and make sure the pieces of pipe you've put in previously didn't move or anything because sometimes that can happen with if you didn't have a, a good bed underneath it's easy for something to drop down and you might not even realize that you have a section back rated you don't want to have any sections of pipe back rated so always double check so i'm pretty happy with where the marks ended up i was able to just go in at an angle and then spin this angle piece down with the 90 on it and we're exactly level and where we want to be and there's grade on each section of pipe all the way to the Y. So what I'm gonna do now is put in the riser pipe that'll stick above the concrete for now and then we'll backfill this in just to lock it in because if you don't lock it in you, uh, stuff will be moving on you when you're starting to pipe the branch and we don't want that. We want everything locked in so it can't move and everything will be more precisely plumbed in. So here this is one of the shorter riser pipes I've done but this will this will come out of this 90 and then our toilet flange later will glue inside of this four inch pipe so we're going to glue this in and then the concrete will finish around it and then the, we'll cut it at the concrete height and the the flange will glue inside of the pipe so here we're uh, setting this y but we have to make sure that beyond the y to where we're going to the tub that we're within five feet this is a two inch drain for a tub shower. It could be inch and a half, but I like to stay with two inch just because of hair can clog the drain. So what we're gonna do here is set this Y so that we are no more than five feet long here. It's, it's gonna be almost exactly five feet, but that's no problem. So what I'm gonna do is cut this at five feet since it's so close and then excavate a little more sand out of here so we can make it work at our maximum trap arm length. The trap arm is this section all the way over to the shower. So to get that at the maximum five feet, we have to make this Y come this way. So then this is the piece that will go in between there. And then this section off the branch is the wet vented section that is heading over towards the sink. So the sink will dump into the wet vented section. Once again, you can see here I'm checking my grade make sure we've got enough we are good to go there and then it's not a bad idea until the glue is set up to just get some sand packed right under there you can see we've got really nice material here why not use it make sure once again we're locked in all right so right now i'm running this last section and we're actually going into the wall and this is going to be this is technically This is technically the vent for the whole bathroom group, but also our sinks are gonna dump into this. Okay, you may have noticed throughout the process, I've been kind of running my fingers and all these shavings go flying. That's super important because on the inside of the pipe, if you left that, you can see how like hair and that type of stuff could catch and start making restriction in the pipe. On cell core pipe, generally the, the burrs come off super easy with your fingers. So I've got my standpipe for the sink drains and the wet vented section of this and all this pipe piping is going to be in the wall. So we're running out of time today, but tomorrow morning we're going to come back and we're going to pipe in this vent here, then the 
fixture cross right here along with a clean out and this can go above or below it doesn't actually matter and then we'll have two arms that come out at the center of our sinks that will be all for tomorrow so that's the last thing i'm going to do is glue this standpipe on all right we're back here day two we're going to finish up this vent here and then also put in the fixture cross and then stub out to our centers of the sink. So there'll be one on either side here. And then we'll also stub out the water with our water brackets. So the next step is gonna be to set this fixture across to height. I always like to go 20 inches off of the floor to the center of the stub out height. And that would be a rough floor. You're gonna have a little bit of variance on what they put down for floor coverings, but it shouldn't be enough to matter. And the reason for that is so that the trap comes into the cabinet and connects to the drain at the correct height. So if you know all your details, you can always change that and play around with it. But I found that 20 inches off of rough is a good number for any circumstance. So let's get this cut to height and we'll um, start putting it all together. All right, so I've already made a little mark where the center of this center uh, drain is going to go into here. So this center is the same as this center. So what I do is I take my tape measure and I'll make a mark 20 inches. Looks like we're right near the top. I'll hook the bottom plate. That's where I want the center of those arms to be. So then I can line up this. right with the center of that line and then this where this bevel changes that'll be the inside of the hub that's right where i need to cut to get this set right to the correct height so before i glue the fixture cross on i'm going to recover this end and we're going to drill through our two studs at the correct height that way we don't get any shavings in here and that way if i pop through with my bit i don't slam into this fitting because then it'll be and other parts are on, I only bought one. So you can notice when I'm gluing that, go in the fitting normal, but on the pipe end, I always put three quarters of the dauber only down, not the full dauber. Otherwise you end up with primer hanging way down below. And it's a good habit to get into because if you ever do an exposed PVC, then it'll look a lot nicer. So before I set the arms, I'm gonna connect this pipe here. This is the vent pipe venting the whole bathroom. So I'm gonna, get the clean out installed and then the pipe into that because then that way this is set left to right because if I do it beforehand then it's going to move my pipes to the centers of the sinks and I don't want that so I want this locked in and then I can lock in the arms after all right so I've set the vent of course you don't want to forget to put some pipe dope on here I'll get that in a second and put it on but then now we're gonna put these trap arms on. We're gonna set them one inch off of center of where the exact center of the sink is. And the reason for that is, is if you ever have a sink bowl too far back to the wall, it'll allow some trap swing so that you can get into a tighter, you can get your trap installed in a tighter spot. And if that bowl isn't off, it's not a big deal to extend the trap out further. So. It has a lot to do with setting yourself up for success on trim. So always go an inch to about two inches off center with this stub out from where your actual sink center is going to be. So this will be one to two inches off of the, the real center that will be when the cabinet is set. Right, so I got the pipe dope here. The reason for this is because if you ever had uh, condensation ride down this pipe it could drip out that's more unlikely but you still want to have it because of the main reason which is because there's sewer gas you don't want to get sewer gas going into your house that's not safe so you always after you go in hand tight want to just snug this up a little bit and of course you don't want to over tighten because if this this is going inside of the plastic and this is plastic so if you over tighten you can split your tee then you have to cut it out and start over 
Sometimes you're in a spot where you're touching hub to hub and if you break your tee, it's even more of a project to replace. So never over tighten these. So our center here is 14 inches off of raw framing. That's where our finished center is gonna be. So as long as I'm about right where I'm at even, I'm 15 and a half, that will work to be one to two inches off. So what I'll do is then that comes out pretty much flush with the stud, which is easy. And then I can just measure to the inside of the hub. Now before it sets up, I take my level and I just want that to be graded back slightly into the wall. Quarter inch to be exact. For this next part, we're gonna do a little trick to get this trap arm exactly where we want it. So what I, what I did here is I took this, which is 28 and three quarter to the end of the pipe, and I transferred that onto the floor, 28 and three quarter right here. So if that is the same number as to the end of the pipe. Now right here, I'm an inch and a half off from where the center of the sink will be, which is what I want. I wanna be roughed in an inch and a half off. So all I have to do now is line this fitting up with the center. And then hold it straight and measure my piece from the end. So now I'm measuring right now, I'm measuring from this mark to the end of this fitting here. So we measure that. We have 16 and an eighth plus our inch and a half to go into this hub and into this hub, which will be a total of 17 and five eighths for this cut. One thing you wanna check also is, even though these are pretty short trap arms, you gotta still maintain your grade. So I set these pretty close to center, but the hole is oversized enough that I can pick it up and we can get this trap arm set to a quarter, quarter inch per foot. So it'll be about right there when I'm done. You'll notice when I'm gluing, I try to make the letters facing out and right side up. Just like in the ground, when the letters are up in the ground, the only difference is they gotta be facing out and right side up in the wall. So the inspector has to be able to read what kind of pipe you're using to make sure it's compliant with the code. One tip if you don't have any plumber's tape or plumber's strap around for this, if you're tipping up the pipe a little bit to get your grade, you can just use your uh, PEX tubing cutters and just snip a piece of plastic off of a little off cut. And then that can go in underneath just as a shim, just to hold this pipe in place. So you might be wondering why I have two different length trap arms. And the reason is, is I don't know at this point if they're gonna select a light fixture that's gonna center on both sinks. So if they choose that and they center between it, the, the box for the light fixture will still miss this two inch vent. Or whether they do a light fixture centered on each one of these centers, my pipe's not in the way. That is one of the most common things an electrician will get upset at a plumber for, is when the plumber puts the two inch pipe right on the center of their light fixture and they have to use a shallow box. So it's one little detail that's pretty crucial. One thing I didn't mention is the vent for this bathroom. It goes into the attic. So you're either gonna be tying into another vent or running a through uh, new puncture through the roof. And that'll have to get a roof flashing. So if you're not comfortable with roofing, of course, you have to get a roofer involved to install that flashing. So in this case, we're gonna tie into another vent and you wanna tie into an equal or larger vent for adding a bathroom like we are in this case. All right, so now that we're completely done with this PVC in this room, let's kind of go over how this works and why we designed it the way we did. So this system is vented through one two inch vent. The whole bathroom is vented through one two inch vent. 
So the way you do that is you have to follow the rules in chapter nine, I believe it is, with how to vent a horizontal bathroom group. And it talks about having the toilet first and then following your fixture sizing beyond the toilet you can only do four more fixture units on a two inch. So if I had like a shower and a tub, I would have had to run this three inch to the next Y. So what we're doing here is this is the trap arm for the toilet technically. And then this is the trap arm from here for the tub running this way. So as long as we do the toilet first and we do the sink last, we follow our sizing and we follow our trap arm lengths we can vent this bathroom with one vent. So the trap arm length on this two inch is five feet, of course, so that running to the tub is really close to five feet, actually, the way this worked out. And that's why you can see I came further this way and then backtracked just to get this pipe shortened since the trap arm starts from here and runs to the, where the trap will be located in the sand. So now let's kind of move focus over to this double lav setup here. So technically, with this double lab set up, the sinks are venting from here. Since this is the vent starting right here up on a conventional, this is also venting the labs. But technically, this vent in this case is wet vent because this pipe below here is not only a drain but also a vent. So this vented section, I'll just point to it is obviously from here and up into the attic, but the wet vented section is from here down around there and all the way to where this Y is. So that would be considered the wet vented section right there up to the bottom of this fixture cross. So that wet vent, since we followed all the criteria all the air for each fixture, for the toilet, for the tub shower over there, and for the two sinks here, it's drawing air from this pipe to all those fixtures when, they have, when they're being used. Okay, so now that we got all the PVC installed, we need to get some water to all these fixtures. So there's gonna be a hot and a cold to the lav, hot and cold to this lav, there's two here, and then there's gonna be a cold water jumper running over to the toilet, and then we're gonna run a hot and cold jumper under the concrete over to the tub shower unit. So let's talk about where, how do you know which lines to tie into? So in this case here, it's pretty easy. So we have an on-demand water heater in the mechanical room back here. So in here, I'll kind of point. This is the cold outlet there, or sorry, cold inlet there, and then the hot outlet. So that's the cold feeding the unit and the red one is the hot coming out. We've followed those lines back. They go up over the mechanical room and come down in the wall right here. So you can see we've already done it, but these are three quarter half by half press tees. If you don't have a pro press tool though, you can drain the system off and solder in. And you notice we're going half to a whole bathroom, but you can do up to a full bathroom on half inch lines. So we'll run from here across, feed these two labs, and then we're gonna drop into the sand with some jumpers running over to the other fixtures as needed. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is install these brackets for the labs, and then we'll have a couple more holes to drill to, through the bottom plate to get those lines into the sand that are running over to the other fixtures. But right now we're gonna put these brackets on right where we want them. So, so these brackets mount to the studs and then these clips go on because you can see they open and close so that you can pop them on the packs and then they tighten onto the bracket and onto the packs when they're when these little tabs go through the holes. So those will hold the stub outs into the cabinet of the sink in place so that you can put on. You can either do 
copper sub outs through these or packs. In this case, I'm gonna do packs and we're gonna do packs angle stops, which are shutoffs underneath the cabinet. All right, so this bracket, I've, I've set the spacing how I want it. You wanna be um, a minimum of about four or five inches because you don't want your trim discussions to overlap underneath the sink. So it's good to have a spread here and then also to leave room from your drain stub into the sink. Again, so your escutcheon doesn't hit your drain. Or, and if you put an escutcheon over your drain piece later, you don't want that to hit either. So the next thing is we're gonna, we're gonna um, get this right where we want it height-wise and here you can eyeball a little bit left to right and we'll get that mounted right where we want it. So I'm just leveling this bracket And then I'm gonna set the other one the same next to it. So for now, I'm not gonna nail it. Now that we have all the holes drilled, you can see I've fished some water lines in here. We've already done the tie in here with three quarter by half pro press tees. Like I said earlier, you can solder that if you don't have a pro press tool. Um, it's adapting to PEX. And then we just did two ball valves so we could get the water up and running for the customer again. So I'll be able to crimp on the other side of the ball valve and then run the lines through. I'll be teeing out for this sink, teeing out for this sink, and then teeing down um, to the run one to the toilet. And then I'll actually have to add one more hole there for the jumper that runs to the toilet. So let's get to it. Yeah. So here you can see that I left a space between the fitting and that space is so when this ring called a Odeka ring, in this case crimps, the PEX will push out of the end as it compresses. So it's almost like you could say oozing out of the end of the ring. And you don't want that PEX to be contacting before you crimp because that is putting pressure on the barb. Basically, it's a steady pulling force on the barb, and over time, that barb could break right off of a brass fitting. So this more applies to brass, but it's a good, um, it's really good to do it as a habit on all your crimp connections. Um, fittings like Viega brand come with a pre-built-in stopper. So those, you don't have to worry about it. You just push them all the way in and crimp them. But if you don't have a stopper, then you have to leave that slight gap between the ring. The ring and the end of the pipe are flush. And then there, you can see that gap in between the end of the pipe and the fitting. And as when I crimp it, that'll push that blue bit of PEX on the other side. Oh, just a little bit. You can see as I compress that a little bit more PEX is sticking out the end than when we started. So if that didn't have a gap and that's pushing against the brass, that's not good. That could break and fail over time. So here I'm just going to line up where it needs to go. And I always have my Sharpie on my hip, pops out, and I just make a mark right where I want it to line up. I mean, I don't usually get as carried away to measure off of here. You know, it's I guess over time with working, you get better at eyeballing. And one thing you notice that I'm cutting this and putting this so that the hot is on the left side. Might seem obvious, but it's pretty easy to get caught up in what you're doing and accidentally put the hot on the right side. But to be standard, it has to go on the left. So I'm gonna put on this side first since it's gonna be inside of the stud. And then I usually like to put a piece of PEX on too. So I'm gonna put this drop down while I'm at it, and then I'll do the left side of the T last. And that's just so, you're kind of doing the pre-building method, I call it, where you pre-build everything you can instead of putting yourself in an unnecessary tough situation. As you can see here, 
this will disappear into here, which it wouldn't have been able to be crimped. Then I'll flex this on. Now you can see that's lands in the wood stud, but that's fine. So here we have a, just for demonstration, a piece of pipe and a half inch PEX T. And this is standard crimp PEX, not expansion or anything like that. So the ring, I don't know if you've seen, I slid that ring on like that. And you want this to pretty much be flush, maybe just a hair past the ring like, like so. And then this pushes on and then you're also leaving a gap on that stopper so that when this compresses that pex will come out but it won't be touching the stopper if it's touching it'll be at the end of the crimp so if that that you don't want to be touching all the way down on the stopper just because it puts unnecessary tension on the extra stress on the fitting so then you simply grab a hold of this with your crimp tool and this part let's look at it from this angle these this will be almost closed when you're done and what that's doing is setting the what are pretty much like gears right here so that 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 steel ring is locked in that closed position and then that's compressing back to here you can see those rings it compresses the plastic over those rings there so that the water can't leak and it's crazy but you can still spin the fitting after it's been crimped with this style and it doesn't hurt anything it's still going to hold so this is my stub out piece i'm going to use and if you kind of go in sideways and then splay it open a little bit then you can still push it in that way you don't have to pull the clip back off and then i'll simply put my rings on And put it together so you can tell that that one ring's falling you just got to make sure that as you're crimping that you get it in the Okay, now the water lines are done. We have these two half inch tie-ins here with ball valves. Um, we, have, we tested them by turning on the water and then we just shut the valves off after, but all the connections seem to be holding. We have a hot and a cold for this lav on the left, a hot and a cold for the lav on the right. And then you can see we have three jumpers that go into the floor. You have one jumper for the toilet cold supply. You have a hot and a cold that go to the tub, which we're gonna install after the concrete has been patched and the wall is framed there. So that's three lines total running below the concrete. One to the toilet for the cold toilet supply. And on these, you'll notice also that we as far as the location for where this goes, you want to be seven inches over from the center line of the toilet. You want to be seven inches over and seven up, which is exactly a two by six, technically five and a half inch block with an inch and a half wall plate for a total of seven inches to the bottom of this line. So it's perfect to just nail a block on the bottom and talon it onto the top of the block. And that's a perfect toilet roughing. So then here we have the two lines and you can see we kind of just have them capped and hanging out for now because later these will bend up like this and we'll connect these to the shower valve with the tub spout but that's going to be a later phase of this project so we basically have them roughed in we'll also set that p-trap 
and all the waste and overflow at that time too. So we kind of have this roughed in and ready to go for the next phase of the project. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if we've earned it. And also, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.